Memorial Stadium where the Illini are going to take on the Boilermakers this Saturday. UI7 News starts right now. The Chicago Bears can accomplish two things with a win at home today. First, pull into a first place tie with the Packers who are on their bye week. And second, all but bury the Minnesota Vikings who come into this contest three and five. And if you remember, that's the season that many Illinois fans think UNC robbed them of their national championship. A year ago, the Illinois basketball team managed just 51 points at Michigan and won. The football team posted 65 in Ann Arbor Saturday, and it still wasn't enough. The Wolverines outslugging the Illini 67-65 in a triple overtime shootout, the highest scoring game in Big Ten history, and a game that has some Big Ten hoops teams scratching their heads. In front of a sold out crowd at Huff Hall, the Illini barely edged out number two Penn State. But after the match, Coach Hamley said this victory isn't going to mean anything unless the team continues to win. And if you're going to San Francisco, well, the flowers in your hair might get wet with all the champagne popping in the streets. The Giants are the World Series champions. Coming up, I'll tell you how Coach Look and his Illini are preparing for Senior Day and the Gophers this weekend. And Brandon Phillips calls the Cardinals little bees. Not actually bees, like as in they make honey. But this isn't the first time that the division rivals took a strong disliking to each other. The Jeffersons both feel comfortable with the football in their hand, but they agree that education is the most important. For every home fighting Illini football game, Memorial Stadium hosts 50,000 screaming fans. But this Saturday, Memorial Stadium will be eerily quiet. A lot of games have been played at Wrigley, so it's, a, it's like a big event, um, and we're playing Northwestern. Illinois fans are excited that one of the most legendary sporting venues is hosting the team's Big Ten finale. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, I've been to Wrigley Field for a lot of Cubs games, but it's going to be a whole different different sort of thing. I know they've had concerts there, but I really think football is a sport that actually might look good on Wrigley Field. While the game might be aesthetically pleasing, is it safe for the team's players? Well, I was looking at some pictures of how the field is set up, and it, there is absolutely no room between the end of the end zone and the ivy covered walls, the brick walls of Wrigley Field. The friendly confines of Wrigley Field might not be that friendly to both teams' receivers. If a quarterback throws a long touchdown pass, well, the receiver is going to have to get both feet down and try to stop his momentum because the back part of the end zone is just a foot away from a padded brick wall. It's a 100-yard field. Uh, there's a couple corners that are close, but uh, um, I think it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not a safety issue. The Illini are done playing under the Memorial Stadium lights, and they have a much larger audience in mind for this game. It's a chance, you know, to show the world, you know, uh, how good we are, you know, the things that we can do and, you know, just try to finish the year strong. The Illini hope to leave Wrigley with a major league win. In Champaign, Laura Hedegar, UI7 Sports. The Fighting Illini made big shots. And in the first half, so did SIU. The beginning of the game, uh, both teams went at it, and we both made shots. Uh, somebody said nine of the first 13 went down. But after the half, it was all Illinois. Coach Weber told us at halftime we was playing too fast. I think we had a lot of emotion and, and trying to get out and make the home run play instead of letting the game come to us and settling down. I think we did a much better job in the second half of cutting, screening, and, and, and getting the ball to everybody and letting everybody get involved. The Illini opened the second half by going on a 19-4 run, leading by 29 at one point. Uh, we've been talking about it since the beginning of the season. It's, um, starting games off good, something we didn't do last year, and, and coming out in the second half and not being nonchalant, something we did um, last year that cost us. So we just wanted to play the first five minutes in the, um, in the first half, and in the second half, like a 0-0, no matter what's the score. Overall, we, you know, we're playing team basketball. Team defense, team basketball and offense moving it. But it still comes down, you know, staying a team. Illinois finishes its three game and six days opening stretch unscathed. Now, Coach Weber is really looking forward to practice time. He's going to use his practice time to work on game conditioning and to find out what his team is really made of. He'll find out Thursday on a national stage when Illinois takes on Texas at Madison Square Garden.
At the Assembly Hall, Laura Hedegger, UI7 Sports. Laura DeBruyler is number one on the Fighting Illini Volleyball Team. And at the end of this year, she could go down as one of the best players in Illinois history. Just constantly having that, of striving to like better myself in terms of playing and then working really hard so that I you know, try to achieve that. No one works harder. I mean, kids work as hard, but no one works harder. And um, she's a special worker, and so it's fun to coach kids like that. In September, Jabruler broke the all-time kills record at Illinois, a title held by former Player of the Year, Mary Eggers. The senior also helped guide a turnaround for Illinois volleyball, from an 18-win season her freshman year to back-to-back -back Sweet 16 appearances. Her energy on the court is contagious. It rubs off on everyone, and I love it. I mean, her love for the game is a special one. When DeBruyler was a freshman, the Illini were pulling in just a thousand fans per match. Now, three years later, DeBruyler and her team's success is bringing four times that many people into Huff Hall. I love playing in front of people and, you know, it helps us especially in big points when we're at home and, and I think people enjoy it just as much as we do. DeBruyler doesn't care about individual awards. The only thing the two-time All-American really cares about is helping Illinois make history win the Big Ten, and then win the national championship. A championship to Ruler and the Illini hope to celebrate this season. Saturday is the final home game of the year for the Fighting Illini, and you can't throw much more into the pot. The Illini are looking for a bounce back after last week's emotional loss. A win over Minnesota and the team becomes bowl eligible. And it being the last home game, that makes it senior day on campus. Some of these seniors have been here for five years, meaning they went through the struggles of 2006, the Rose Bowl year in 07, then the disappointments of 2008 and 2009. Coach Ron Zook is happy things have come full circle for them, as it appears the team will go bowling this year. They've had an awful lot to do with it. And, and as I said, they've been kind of to the top of the mountain, back down, and, you know, and trying, to, trying to climb back up there again. And uh, I think they've, they've, done a, they've done a nice job. Maybe people down the road will realize just what they did mean in terms of the, the glue, so to speak, and holding people together and, and uh, what they stood for. Wow, it's real, uh, four years have passed real fast. And um, you know, it's going to be my last game at Memorial Stadium here in the University of Illinois uniform. It's just a lot of motivation that's playing a, a major role into uh, this game and coming out with um, the motivation we need to come out with a victory. We've reached the quarterfinals of the IHSA football playoffs and we're still seeing area matchups. That is definitely a testament to the level of play here in Central Illinois. Unity and SJO square off this weekend in St. Joseph. The winner is off to the semis. So far, the Rockets have beaten Monticello and St. Teresa, while St. Joe is coming off wins over Paris and St. Thomas More. Spurns head coach Dick Duvall knows the challenges only get tougher no matter what part of the state your opponent comes from now. You know, we know that uh, you're not going to you're not going to get any patsies uh, in the playoffs. I mean, every team's going to be good and uh, we're just going to have to see if we can dig down a little bit deeper even more because uh, we're a little bit banged up right now and uh, um, you know, we'll just have to see who can heal up and uh, we'll be ready to play. The Illini played as good of defense in the first half of their season opener as I've seen them play in a long time. And the result was a 42-18 lead at the half. Now they didn't match the intensity in the second half, but the first 20 minutes were impressive. It seemed as if UC Irvine had no chance of scoring and they certainly weren't going to do it because of an open look. This is what Bruce Weber has been preaching. I asked him how often last year's team played at that level. I don't think ever on defense, to be honest. You know, you know, we probably had some little spurts at, you know, where we did it for a couple minutes here and there. But, uh, you know, now the key is what you ask. Can we bottle it? Can we, you know, keep bringing it back to the table at, at, in the games? We got to work on second half now. We, we know we can come out and give energy and things like that. But we need to learn how to play a full 40 minute game because, as you know, Coming into the next game, we might have to play 40 minutes. Or if you're looking down the stretch in New York against Texas, a good team, you, you got to play 40 minutes. You can't play one half of basketball. And that's a quick look at sports. We'll be right back.